Hey, happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I do apologize for coming to you in front of my heater. I ate a salad a little while ago and I got cold. Have you ever had that happen? I ate a salad and then I just got like chilled. I, I got cold and I couldn't get warm. And I went ahead and I recorded the voiceover for the video I'm making for my other channel. And then as soon as I got done, I got down here and I had my salad and then, and then I got cold and I just, I want to stay in front of the heater. That's my microphone back there. Sometimes when it shows up in a video, people go, what the hell is that? It's a microphone. It's a, calm down. It's not what, it, it's a damn microphone. Shut up. Every time, that, every time somebody says, what is that in the background? You're not going to find anything exciting in the background of any of my videos. Honey, look. I've been married three times. I got two kids. Any exciting shit that you would have ever seen in the background in any anything I ever did has been gone for a very long time. Okay, there ain't nothing exciting going on around here. My idea of a wild night is going to pick up pizza at 9 o'clock. That's a wild, exciting night. You, get, you know what, though? You get to a certain age, you get to where you appreciate that. You know, I do. I appreciate it. I had my fun. I puked off enough balconies. I, I had my wild and crazy days when I was younger, and that's fine. But you do just kind of reach a point where it's like, you know, that's kind of boring. Well, it got it got boring to me. I thought it was kind of boring. I know I had this. Did I have this on yesterday? I probably did. I've been lounging. I I wear it when I'm just lounging around the house. I wear I wear something for like two days off and on. I don't wear it all day. I have stuff on under it. I just, you know, I wear it for a couple days, then I wash it and I'll put on another one. But this is one of my favorite hoodies because it's it's really comfortable. What was I saying? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I got bored with going out and doing crazy stuff. Cause after a while, this this looks like some BDSM shit back here. It's not. I'm it's a sock. What is this thing? It's a night sock, and it's nothing, I'm not, you know, like playing a gimp or anything like that. It's a night sock from Pro Stretch, and those two uh, physical therapy guys on YouTube, I can't remember their names, Bob and Brad, or Beep and Boop, I can't remember their names. I've only recently discovered them. They recommended the sock, and you put the sock on, and it has this part here. Where's the strap? I've lost it. No, shit, anyway, there's a strap that you put on your leg. And you can adjust this. It has Velcro. And it, it what it does is it pulls your toes up just a little bit. And you're supposed to sleep like that. It suggests, though, I have the instructions here. I just got it today. The night sock. You're supposed to start out really slow. Don't pull your toe up too much at first. And gradually increase the amount of, you know, the amount of t uh, force, I guess. Or the amount of flex, you know. So I'm trying this for my foot. It's not anything. It's real. That, that's the most interesting thing in here. When it comes to bondage shit, you know what? I'm just down to wearing stuff to keep my foot from hurting. I don't really care about anything else. Don't bother me with that shit. Yeah, so I got bored doing exciting stuff at some point. You know, well, especially, too, after you have kids. I mean, you know, you're working all the time. You got kids. You got stuff going on with them. And at some point, you just realize, you know, I've just become one of those people that I used to think was so lame and boring. But you know what? I like my life. I, li I like this. Maybe to other people, it does look lame and boring. It's actually really nice. And if I'm being honest, and I, I'm enjoying these years much more than I enjoy those wild and crazy years. I really am. I mean, I'm glad I got to experience it. But I moved on from it, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went on and did other stuff. I'm glad I had kids. I am. They're, they're awesome. <laughs> they are. And I guess when you're on the outside looking in, it can look lame and boring, but I'm happy. I like my lame and boring life. I'm rolling my foot on a little foot massager thing. My, my foot is, well, it is what it is. I went by the Good Feet store today, though, and they were really nice. I went in there to talk to them about my insoles that I got from them a while back and the fact that I was still having so much pain. So what they're doing, they have swapped out one of my insoles, and they're going to, um, I'm going to try that for a little bit and see if it feels any better. 
I wore it for like half the day today. Um, it did actually feel a little bit better. It did seem to help some. And I, I'm going to keep wearing it to see if it helps. I'm still going to the foot doctor in February. I'm not. I'm still doing that, but I'm trying that as well. Like, you know, I pay good money for these insoles. And, the, you know, right now I don't feel like they're really helping me. So I just went by there to see, like, here's the problem. Is is there anything y'all can do? I mean, you know, I paid a lot of money for these insoles. And I just don't feel like they're doing anything anymore. They don't really help. So they have, I'm, I'm trying out a different one now, so... It felt better. I put it in and I walked around the front of this. I went out and walked on the sidewalk in front of the store for a little bit. And, and it did feel better. I mean, it, I, I put it in and it, my foot still hurt. But it didn't hurt as much. I said, well, they said, well, just try, you know, try this one out for a little while, a week or two or whatever you want to do. And, and see if you think this is helping. If not, we'll try something else. So they were very helpful. Very, very nice. Very helpful. So I wasn't sure what they were going to say. I thought, you know what's going to happen? You can go in there and they're going to be like, tough shit. You, you know, that's what you bought. That's what you get. Tough shit if it doesn't work. They weren't like that at all. They were really, really super nice. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I don't know why. I guess it's because with every other company I've dealt with lately, that's kind of how they were. Like, well, tough shit. Oh, God, today. I called the company that did my siding that I was so happy with. Uh, the name of the company is Skywalker Roofing, but they do siding as well. I called them today and I said, you know, I haven't heard from y'all. You know, I paid 50% up front and I still owed them like $8,000. $8, like, do y'all want your money? Because I haven't heard from y'all in like three weeks. <laughs> do you know what happened? They, apparently, they never put into the system that I owed them any more money. Apparently, it was like marked paid or something. I said, oh, damn. Yeah, so if I guess if I had never called, I would have never heard any more about it. I would have paid them anyway, because it's, it's, you know, like, I owe you that money. This is what I agreed to pay. But, yeah, she said it's crazy. It was put in as, like, paid or something. Like, like you were done. That's why you didn't hear from us. Oh, <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> nah. So, yeah, apparently if I hadn't called, they would have never... I'm sure they would have called it eventually, right? Maybe not. I mean, if it was in the system as paid or, you know, not due for some reason, maybe not. That's crazy. But I did get it. I, I, got, I gave them the payment information, so it's paid. So I'm completely done with that. And hopefully soon I'll get some new shelves for my kitchen cabinets that don't do like this. I'm getting some solid birch shelves put in my kitchen cabinets. See, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Stuff like that is exciting to me. The thought of going out and getting drunk or, you know, whatever, partying all night doesn't excite me at all. It just makes me go, ugh. Can we be back by nine? Because I, you know, in my foot, like I can't. Can I sit down to do that? Don't sit down and drink for a long time because you don't realize how drunk you're getting. And then when you go to stand up, you, you know, you face plant possibly. Not that I would know. I would totally never have had an experience like that. Don't sit in a lawn chair at somebody's house at a party and just keep drinking because your boyfriend's ex-girlfriend is there and she's being really nice to you for some reason. But when she got there, you were already pretty buzzed and you didn't really think about it very much. Like you decided not to think about it too hard. And she was being really, really sweet to you. And she keeps bringing you drinks. And then when you go to stand up, you just like, yeah. You just stand up and you just keep going like that. Yeah. And then the bitch laughs at you. Yeah. And she has a Polaroid there. This was back in the days before the internet. Pussy. Pussy. I ain't forgot. Yeah, you may be all sanctimonious and married to a preacher now, but I ain't forgot. Pussy. Anyway, that was like, oh my God, that was over, that was like over 30 years ago. Anyway, I had my wild and woolly days, and now I'm calm, and I don't do that anymore, and I'm, I'm happy. I like it. I, I feel that I, I very gently and gracefully eased into, like, middle-aged woman territory and I feel that I will sail into old lady territory as long as my foot is not bothering me I don't deal well with pain I've discovered that like long-term pain I'm not interested in that shit I'm not interested in that but you know what's really sad 
you know, I was engaged when I was 16. I've mentioned that before. Yes, I was. I was engaged to a, a, a bad boy. You know, he was in and out of jail. He dropped out of high school at 16. He was uh, about three years older than me. Almost, yeah, about three years older than me. He was in and out of jail. He didn't work. He lived with his grandma. He lived in his grandma's basement. You know, he was he was a loser. And, you know, he loved to party, party. Like, that was his whole personality. There wasn't really much else to him. He was a good drummer. He loved he loved music, and he, he played in a couple of bands. And he was a damn good drummer when he was younger. I don't know about any more, but, you know, oh, I loved him. You know, it's a classic example of not getting any attention at home, so you go look for it elsewhere and typical. And, oh, I loved him. My parents hated him. Well, my mom didn't mind him too bad. My dad hated him because he had long hair, and my dad was in Vietnam, and he was not a big fan of long-haired hippie-type people, you know? And, uh, he, yeah, they were not treated well when they came home. And uh, so he hated this guy. But it didn't matter, because my dad and I really had no relationship at that point anyway, so I didn't really care how he felt about him. We lived in the same house, but we had no relationship at all. We went for nine years and he wouldn't speak to me, but that's a story for a whole other day. Yeah, that didn't fuck me up at all. Excuse me. Pardon my language. This guy, he loved to party. Like, that was his whole personality. And, and I, you know, he popped up on Facebook as a friend suggestion. Like, other people you may know. Like, well, I know these people, but I'm not friends with them because they suck. I know those people. You don't need to tell me about them. I know who they are. I know damn well who they are, and I don't want to be friends with them. Quit suggesting them. So I have to tell it for certain people. Like, quit popping this person up. I know that bitch is on here. I don't want to be friends with her. If I wanted to be friends with her, I already, read, I already would be. So he popped up just out of nowhere like, oh, God. And I saw a picture of him. It's like, oh, God. So keep in mind, now this was like a year ago. So... A year ago, he would have been 51. This dude was 51. 51. Still trying to dress like it's 1987. I mean, literally. He wears the exact same clothes. He looks like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead, but his hair is, he's going bald, but he won't let go of the long hair. So it's like his hair is just sliding back on his skull, but he just will not cut it. Like, no, I'm going to cherish my locks even though they're really thin and stringy and just look really, really bad. No, I will not cut this hair. I, I embrace my long hair. So I guess he's had long hair this whole time, wearing like a shredded Pantera t-shirt, the holy jeans, you know, got like the chains hanging from his belt loops and rock and roll, party, or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. And I saw that picture, and he wasn't dressed up for a costume party. No, no, no. This is how this dude just looks. This is Tuesday for him. This is how he is. And I, and it, honestly, I'm looking at it, and in a way it made me sad. I was like, damn, you haven't changed a bit. And sometimes when you say that, that's not a good thing. You haven't changed at all. Like, you haven't grown up at all. You still have no job, no car, no money. I don't know where you're living because your grandma's bound to be dead by now. What the hell are you doing? Oh, God. But then I thought, well, I mean, shoot. If he's happy, what does it matter? What's it to you? I mean, if he's happy, let him be happy. I want nothing to do with him. My God. He would drain me emotionally, mentally, and financially. No, thank you. There is nothing I want there. I wouldn't touch that with a hazmat suit on because I don't know where you've been, but you've been road hard and put up wet. You just stay over there wherever the hell you are. I am not interested. <laughs> oh, even if I were single, I wouldn't be interested. Holy shit. Like, so I had to click like, don't, don't recommend this person again. Jesus, go away. But if he's happy, I guess that's all that matters. I assume he's happy. I don't know. Man, as long as he has somebody to sponge off of and to bail him out of jail whenever he gets caught doing dumb shit, he probably is happy. 
So, yeah, that won't be me. I'm not going to run around town trying to find him when he disappears for days and nobody knows where he is. And then I find out later he's, you know, laid up with some bitch somewhere. Oh, God, he cheated on me so many times. And I was too naive to see that that's what he was doing, to understand that's why he disappears, you silly little girl. No, oh, they're coming to get me. I hear sirens. But I am happy to look back at pictures of me from 30 plus years ago and go, yeah, I'm not, I, I have changed. I've changed a lot since then. And that makes me happy. But I guess if it makes him happy to not change, well, mission accomplished. You have not changed at all since the last time I saw you. The last time I saw him was in 1992, I believe. 92? No, no, I ran into him after that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did. I ran into him the summer of 1995 because he was married and I had moved back to my hometown to stay there and work. And uh, I was living in this, my, the trailer I grew up in. My mom had the property and I was renting it from her for $100 a month and I had to keep the place up. I had to mow like three acres every week and I had to keep the place up, clean the house out because she wanted to rent it out after I moved out and the place was a mess. That trailer was just trash from whoever was staying there before. I know who was staying there before, but I'm not going to say who, but they left that place a mess. So I had to clean it up. I had to get down and scrub the damn floors like Cinderella with a brush to get them clean, and that place was nasty. But I got it cleaned up and looking nice. I did some painting in there. You know, I, I trimmed all the bushes around and, you know, made it look pretty good. Um, and then I also paid her $100 on top of that. But anyway... This, uh, so I was working, and I, I was working second shift, and I had just gotten home from work. I was really tired. It was about midnight, between midnight and 1 a.m., and I, I had a, a couch. I had a couch I had bought at a thrift store in there. All my furniture was just like thrift store stuff, kind of like now. That, <laughs> that hadn't changed. Shit, I still do that. I find the coolest furniture in thrift stores. I can't help it. I go into a furniture store. It's like, this shit's boring. Everything in here sucks. I find interesting stuff in thrift stores, so I buy that. So anyway, I had kind of drifted off, and I was watching something on TV. I have a TV in there, and I had just kind of drifted off to sleep on the couch. And next thing I know, somebody is pounding and banging on my front door, just like kicking it and pounding on my door. Open up, bitch! And I'm going, the hell? Who is that? Open up, bitch! I know you're in there. And I'm going, all right then. So, she was about to knock the door down. I mean, the door was not that sturdy. You know, it's like, she's going to bust the door down. What in the hell? So, I said, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. And I got up, I was terrified. I opened the door, because I'm not, I was, I was 21 and not very smart. I just opened the door. I knew who it was. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give you details. I knew who she was. And I, I couldn't figure out, why are, you, why are you banging on my door? And she came in there, and I, I knew that she was buried married to the guy that I used to be engaged to. I broke up with him, by the way. Have I ever been dumped? I guess you could say I was dumped, kind of dumped. I was basically ghosted, though. I dated this guy for a while, and then he just kind of disappeared. Does that count as being dumped? That's the only time. If that counts, that's the only time I've ever been dumped. Anyway, I knew he was married to her. That's all I knew. I, I had heard around town that they were married, like, Okay, fine. I, I didn't really care. Like, I had I had a broken heart for a long time when I he made me choose between going back to college or being with him, and I chose to go to college, and, and he said, well, that's the end of us then. And I was heartbroken for several years. I really was. And uh, a lot of my partying was a way to try to forget how heartbroken I was. And, um, but I was kind of over it at this point. Like, okay, fine. Well, I hope they're happy together. I, you know, whatever. So she comes into my house with a box cutter. She still, I still remember what she had on. She had on a peach colored tank top and these white Daisy Duke shorts. And she comes in there in all her trashy glory and she's got, you know, her caked on makeup, the big frizzy perm, and she's waving a box cutter in my face like, where is he, where is he, you bitch, you bitch. And I said, who are you talking about? You know who, and she, you know, the guy's name. I said, he's not here. Yes, he is. And see, somebody had broken into my house like a week prior. Because I came home from work one night, 
and I realized some stuff was missing. Now that is a freaky feeling to come home and realize somebody's been through your house. She had, st and it was her. I know it was her because I found out later because I talked to him and he said, oh yeah, you know what? Because I had this big thing of cassette tapes and it was gone and that was about all I noticed that was gone. This big display thing of all, this was the 90s, okay? I still had cassette tapes, early 90s, mid 90s, whatever. I had all these cassettes in a little, like a little shelf thing. He said, oh, I found that. She had a Toyota Tercel hatchback. He said, she had a big old thing of cassette tapes in her Tercel, and she didn't say where they came from. Like, that was mine. Asshole didn't even bring them back to me. I never got my cassettes back. So this was like a week, a week before. So she's all like, I know he's here. I know he's here. I said, feel free to search the house. There's nobody here but me. And I was scared. Like, is she going to cut me? Is she going to cut me? So I had just gotten a psychology degree. I thought, use your, use your damn piece of paper you spent four years getting. So I decided to make myself as small as possible. Like, you, you may be threatening her by standing, you know, like, you know, make yourself small. That was just my first thought. And I was in the, I was, I was very anorexic at this point. Uh, um, I might have weighed 92 pounds. So I thought, so I just slowly sat back down on the couch and I just, I just sort of drew up and I made myself small and I would look at her, but I didn't stare at her, you know, and she's asking me all these questions and she's still waving this box cutter at me. And I said, he's not here. You are free to go search the house. You can go look wherever you want to in here. He's not here. He hasn't been here. I haven't seen him in years. I haven't seen him in like three years. I'm just living here so I can work. And uh, she didn't ever go look. I figured she'd go look. And she kept waving around like, bitch, I'll cut you up. I'll cut you up. I said, why would you do that? I'm going to cut you up. Why would you do that? Why would you cut me up? I haven't done anything to you. Well, I know you've been you've been seeing him. I'm like, I haven't. I haven't done anything with him. And then I thought back to the days when I was with him. And I said, let me guess. He's been disappearing on you, hasn't he? He's been just vanishing. No explanation, no nothing. He's, he's just not there. For like two or three days, you, you won't know where he is. She said, yeah, because he was with you. I said, mm-mm. He did that to me too. That's what he does. He's cheating on you. Not with me. I haven't seen him. I don't want to see him. I don't want him. You can have him. But you're not the only one. He's cheating on you because that's just what he does. That's what he does. People don't change. He's cheating on you. And she was so angry. No, he's not. No, You thought he was here with me and you're going to tell me you don't think he's cheating. You know he's cheating. So he's not here. I don't know why you think he is. He's not here. You're welcome to look. He hasn't been here. He's not going to be here. So anyway, it's funny thing was, she stayed there for like an hour. And she did calm down. She calmed down. She put the box cutter in her back pocket. She closed it up. You know, she had it out, like the blade out. She closed it up, put it in her pocket. She didn't sit down, but she definitely calmed down. She was still standing, and she started saying, yeah, we're going to have a baby. I said, well, congratulations. I think it was supposed to make me jealous or something. I said, well, congratulations. Yeah, we're going to have a baby. Well, I'm happy for you. That's that's great. And I just kind of looked at her like, I'm okay, I'm not worried about it. But she told me she it was weird because once she kind of got it all out of her system, she started telling me like personal stuff about her, like really personal. I'm not going to say what she said, just stuff from her past and like her childhood and some bad stuff that went on. Like, wow. I mean, I had no idea. And uh, so she said, yeah, I, I just, I'm just mad because I don't, I don't know where he is. I said, yeah, I remember those days. I remember going all over town, trying to find him, going from one house to another, trying, have you seen him? Have you seen him? And nobody's seen him. And all that time, he's, he's with somebody else. He's not giving you a second thought. He didn't give me a second thought. He wasn't worried about it. And then he would just show back up like nothing happened. She said, yeah. 
He does that. I said, yeah, because he's not worried about it. He has no respect for you. He had no respect for me either. That's why I'm not with him anymore. So good luck with, good luck with that. So anyway, but yeah, so I didn't get cut up. Um, and then she left. And the next day, he called me. Out of nowhere, he called me and he said, I'm so sorry she did that. I said, oh, it's fine. But, you know, don't don't scare her like that, especially, you know, if she's pregnant, you don't need to be scaring her. She, he said, oh, she's not pregnant. She's just gained weight. I'm like, oh, damn, that's mean. Well, she told me she was pregnant. No, she's not pregnant. Okay, well, don't do that. I mean, that's just, that's just, she's your wife. I mean, don't do that to her. Anyway, so he came by. I want to come by. I want to see. And I probably should have told him no, but I hadn't seen him in a long time. Like, nothing's going to happen. I just want to, you know, let him come by. I was kind of hoping he would bring my tapes back because he did tell me, like, about the tapes. He said, oh, yeah, she's got those. I guess he was afraid to try to take them from her. Anyway, so they didn't stay married. Um, and then I think they divorced not long after that. And I don't really know what happened to him after that. I don't know. I wasn't worried about it. So... I don't know how the hell I got off on that. That was an exciting night. That was a very exciting night. That was the first time in my life that I think I really feared for my safety. And it was kind of a wake-up call for me. Like, you know, you do live on your own, and you might want to be able to defend yourself in case another crazy person comes along. So I took that to heart, and I dealt with it as I saw fit the end so um yeah i've got to get on I've, my videos finished processing and I, I i'm over being cold so i gotta get a shower and I, I gotta get my video ready to go but thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here um i hope your week is going well my dad and stepmom are coming later not today but they're coming for a visit um and that's cool so i'm really excited about that and uh yeah it's good it's it's good my my foot hurts but whatever everything else is going fine <laughs> so thank you so much for being here i really hope you have a great day i'll see you again soon